my name is Kayla. We're out here at Gutted 2021, just outside Great Sand Dunes National Park. I'm here to show off my Ford Transit Connect. So let's come on inside. So we're going to start off here in the kitchen. Uh, the first decision I made was I wanted this nice big countertop. I made it out of walnut, pocket screwed it with some uh, help with some friends, and the first decision we made was we wanted it to be level with this window back here. I chose this version of the Ford Transit Connect because of the passenger windows in the back. That just gives me a lot of light, makes the small space just look a whole lot bigger. So we made this countertop level right here, and that then decided all of the space that we were going to have down here below. So the first thing that we've got is we've got some drawers just beneath the countertop. I've got kind of all my utensils here that I'll use for cooking. I'm a big tea person, so I've got all my chai and my matcha, nice and accessible. Up top is where I've got all of my pantry items. So I've got all my noodles, my produce, um, and that sort of thing. So something that I really wanted about this build was that I wanted to still be able to access my fridge from inside, even when I'm just sitting inside. So it's just a pop top uh, fridge. It can go all the way down to a freezer. It's an Iceco 12 liter fridge. Um, what's really nice about it is it's Bluetooth controlled. So when I'm driving in the front seat, want to check on my fridge in the back, I can change it to a freezer or, you know, let it, let it warm up a little bit. And the nicest thing is I've actually got this plugged into my starter battery in my car. So it's really nice. I can just park. It's going to continue to run off my starter battery, but it's going to shut itself off after it drains it to a certain amount. So that's the breakdown. I've got a little bit more storage here, just like my pots and pans um, and some other odds and ends. But the, my favorite thing about the kitchen is how it pulls out. So I'll show you guys how that works now. Okay, so on nice days like today, I don't necessarily want to be cooking inside anyways. And the great thing is, is I can just open this door over here just a little bit more to give myself a little bit more space. And then I just push down on these two tabs here and the whole kitchen will just slide on out like that and click into place. And then that way, even though I got a real small van here, um, you know, I can stand up outside and use this as my cooking area. So I take out my Coleman stove and I just pop it up like this. I still have access to my fridge right down here, so if I'm cooking, I can just pop this up. Um, I've got all my spices here that if I'm doing some kind of, you know, dinner and all my, all my food here. And then oftentimes what I'll do as well, I'll just move these cushions and move out my slats and I'll put a piece of wood right here. So I've got a cooking area, I can still access my countertop, and then I've got all my cooking uh, stove and burner going on right here. Off the end here, we've actually got another set of drawer slides within those bigger ones. It's a nice cutting board area space, but you can also just pop it down like that. It's a nice little sink. I'll put my dirty dishes there. The cool thing is I can grab it and take it, you know, to the camp sink and just get all my dishes washed off. And then it just pops right back on up and then just slides underneath. And the reason that I decided to put that there was these drawer slides. Um, to bring everything out, the fridge to be able to move this way, these slides had to be on top of it, so I lost all of this space. And in a small van like this, you want to utilize every inch. And so I was losing these three inches of the drawer slides, but by putting this uh, little cutting board underneath, I felt not as bad about it because I had that extra functionality. So one thing that I really like about this is that we made it out of um, eighth inch aluminum. Some of my friends who do some metal work consulting back in Wisconsin, um, they knew that I was going to try to build this out of plywood and I was going to be using, you know, half or three quarter inch plywood for this whole thing and I was going to lose so much space. It was just going to be so much bigger because each one of these faces was ha going to have to be a lot bigger. So by making it out of eighth inch aluminum, I was able to save a whole bunch of space and then, you know, fit in not only a fridge and my Coleman, but then even have space for these drawers that stay inside um, that I can store things in. So I think that's one of my favorite things that we were able to do was make this out of metal and I think that's pretty so I decided to go full-time this summer um, really because the pandemic has just really prevented me from meeting up with the people that I love and sharing in the same space you know we all have found ways to cope um, the pandemic has pushed us on to platforms like zoom and you know really virtual um, meetups but really nothing replaces being in the same place 
place with the people that you love. And so I really pushed hard to get my rig done as soon as possible and I hit the road and did this big loop um, out on the East Coast and just week to week was living with different friends and working from their kitchens, their living rooms, their you know dining rooms, but just getting to share the same space with them. Um, it was, it just reaffirmed that human connection is just something that we can't live without. The transition honestly wasn't that hard to transition from like living in my co-op to this space. I've always like picked the smallest room <laughs> in the houses that I live in um, and I've always challenged myself to just even if I'm um, in a home base just to figure out what it is that I need and not have any more than that and so I've always just loved small spaces when I think back on it. Um, so this definitely was a little bit more of a challenge to really downsize a bit but I feel like I have everything I need and um, it just felt like a new challenge and it even though there were some hardships with it it was just I felt like every day was a challenge and I was excited. So then on the opposite side from the kitchen, we've got my living room, bedroom, dining room, all in one. Um, just the modular side of the design was what I'm really proud of in this really small space. It's something that I think all Ford Transit Connect owners really have to struggle with and you have to solve in your own way. And I'm really proud of uh, what I have here. So in the very first state at, that it's in, we've got our living room, kind of like our couch mode. We've got our light switch back here for our puck lights coming on and off. Um, we've got our fan that we can turn it on and off and just keep things nice and cool for kind of like the lounging mode. Sometimes I'll set up my computer here and I'll work, um, but it's just like a nice relaxed state of just, this is how I keep it th during the day as people are coming in and out or I'm trying to like um, be on the road and just kind of get some stuff done. So after living room mode, the next easiest mode is to transition to the single sleeper mode. The width of these cushions here are exactly a camping mat. That's what kind of designed this width. Um, but if I'm trying to sleep in like super stealth mode, not trying to go out of the car or anything, I actually have my bike um, in this aisle way here so that I don't have it outside the van and really like show everyone that I'm trying to sleep in here but I can sleep on this like narrow cushion it's not as comfortable just because I don't have as much space but it, it allows me to be able to keep other things in the aisle way so after the single sleeper mode then um, we've got our slats that come out um, that can just allow for the bed to expand and then the back of the sofa will come down and actually just fit right alongside here and make a twin size mattress. Um, allows for a little bit extra space, maybe if you've got a friend, someone you really like along, gives you guys a little bit more space to work with. Um, and I think that's part of the design challenge is I'm not trying to cook and eat and work all at the same time. Really this transitions to support one mode or the other, like either I'm trying to sleep or I'm trying to cook or I'm trying to work. And um, that's something that makes a small space still really workable and still really you know, doable. So after we collapse these things back in, um, we just rotate the large cushion here into an L shape from the back. Um, slats that pull out here and the center area actually pulls up and we've got that table leg that we put underneath and that sets up nicely as a two-seater um, dining area. I actually can rotate the table around a little bit and get four people back here. We had dinner up at Glacier National Park. My sister and her husband and her friend, we all sat back here. Really didn't feel cramped because I've got a nice amount of headspace um, and we've got just this nice wide table and like I was saying we're not trying to do many things at once we're just all trying to eat together and everyone that's in here says it doesn't feel like we're cramped even though it's a small space but uh, we make it work and I really like it. All right so then under each of kind of the cubicles I've got just this drawer that pops up that's my clothes I call this bottom one my garage I've got all my screws and nails and spray paint, kind of all my upkeep and all the projects I might be doing on the road. Um, back here I've got another two sets of drawers, so this top one is just my underwear and socks, and then the bottom one is kind of all my toiletries and toothbrush, toothpaste, sunscreen, all that kind of thing. So up top the cabin here we've just got um, this piece of metal that we bent. The normal shelf in the Ford Transit Connects will just come out this far, but I just fit a piece of metal that came and just brought it right out to the back of the seats here. And up top I've got some of my larger clothes items, so I've got my pants, my sweatshirts, 
and jackets, and then I've got always on hand my Frisbee, my sleeping bag, and my pillow, and that's what I'll use to set up and sleep back here. Um, I've also then got my curtains that I just pull across to kind of give myself a little bit of privacy at night, um, as well as all the curtains that uh, cover up all of the windows because this Transit Connect does have more windows than normal um, but I really like the light and how much it opens up the space but I do have to keep those uh, pulled together at night but something that I love about the Transit Connect is all the exposed metal so um, I just pull them open here and I slide them open and I've got actually magnets on all three sides of the of the curtains so they just snap together right in the middle and then they snap to the exposed metal frame and that just keeps things nice and pulled tight. I've got blackout curtains as the first layer and then a little bit more of a decorative fabric to match my cushions that I've got here. So I, mo I made all those myself as well as the cushions. Um, I love sewing and just being able to express myself with designing it instead of just buying it from somewhere really made the space feel like my own and something that I was really proud of. a master's student um, in the academic year but this summer I was able to take some time off from school I actually got a remote internship which allowed me to go back home build out the rig and then I've been on the road for this last month in about a week here I'll be starting up school again so it's been a great way to just get a taste of being on the road and building out my first rig and um, meeting all these people has gotten me really inspired to, uh, after I graduate, get into this a uh, whole lot more. I'm a biomedical engineer and right now I'm studying artificial intelligence and machine learning in healthcare. So there's a little bit of flexibility there of stuff that I could do on the road. I'm really interested in being able to continue the passion that I have for engineering. Um, and I've got a couple options that might be able to facilitate being full-time on the road, um, but we'll just see how, how things turn out and I would love to, at a minimum, I would love to build out a bigger rig and just take that next step of a little bit of a bigger space, but for now, being a weekender that I'm looking to have built out, this is, this is doing the job. Alright, so then across from the other door, the second door that pulls open on the transit, um, just beneath this bench here, I've got my Paxess um, power pack. It's a 300 watt hour um, power bank, but the really cool thing is it's got everything in one. I've got an AC out, I've got lots of USB ports, um, and then I also have my DC out. And so these plugs that are here are going to my lights and my fan. And then this plug here is where you can charge it up. So I either have that connected up to my alternator, so when I drive it charges, or I pull this cable out here, and I've got my solar panels that I'll pull out front on top of my hood whenever I park somewhere so I can just plug that right in all right so when I'm out in the sun in the desert and the sun's beating down um, I don't have an air conditioner but this giant <laughs> aluminum blanket is really enough it's just a really really lightweight um, kind of reflective material and I just literally throw it on the front um, mostly the head of the car and the windshield is where a lot of the heat will enter into my car so by just putting the sunshade on it I feel like it keeps my car easily 10 to 15 degrees cooler than what it is outside and um, it doesn't look pretty but it gets the job done and um, can't complain about that so another thing that I just really love about this car in particular is just the small size of it. Some people see it really as a caveat, but I just see it as being a really flexible and versatile rig to get you around wherever you want to be. Um, I can park it just in a normal parking stall and nobody will suspect that like I can sleep in it at night. So another thing that's just great about its small size, um, I get between 25 to 26 miles per gallon. Um, and that's just great when I'm trying to go long distances in comparison to some of the bigger rigs you know you've got a lot more space but obviously that's going to be compromised with your gas mileage and this thing's nice and small and meets my needs so not looking for anything else. I would say my biggest reflection on building out such a small space is I was really challenged to think about what it is that I need for my lifestyle and for what I was looking to be able to do. I think we see a lot of videos online of these big rigs with toilets and showers and 
like these beautiful black backsplashes and all of this space, um, big solar panel build outs and so on and so forth. But um, when it comes down to it, like you really just have to think about what am I trying to do and you know where am I trying to boondock or you know who am I trying to meet. If you're just trying to meet up with friends, you know more than likely you'll be able to sleep at their places and you know charge your computer there and you know get air conditioning there. So just think about really what you need and don't overcomplicate things and know that your rig is going to be like no one else's rig and you should be proud of that. Um, rather than trying to just copy what everyone else is doing, you know, really fingerprint it and really make it your own for your lifestyle. And that has been the most rewarding experience because I feel like this build is something I really have ownership over and I love. And I can't, can't wait for that to come out in all the videos that I hope to share with the decisions that I, make, that I made and how I built it because um, it's a really liberating experience and it's just part of like a formative part of your identity of just like who am I and like what am I trying to do so it's been a lot of fun and I can't wait for the fact that this is just the beginning. My Instagram just got released for uh, this van coming to gutted. I knew I was going to meet up with a lot of people so it's Murphy underscore mobile um, being my van so Murphy underscore mobile and then another underscore is where you can find and follow along on all our adventures. Thanks guys for following along on this tour. Um, I'm just getting started so I'd really appreciate if you hopped over my channel and if you like my videos and are interested in hearing more specifics about the build and um, seeing a little bit more behind the scenes of how everything got put together, I'd love it if you guys gave this video a like, give them a subscribe and uh, you know hop over my channel as well. Um, hope to see you there and can't wait to share more.